<laughs> and um, so what about the uh, the off season, uh, Craig? What what do you do uh, from sort of here till February? Uh, bugger all, hopefully. Um, it's, look, it's one of those things that it's been a long year. We started in Abu Dhabi and uh, we finished obviously here in Homebush. Next year, it starts at uh, Clipsal in Adelaide and, uh, and of course, uh, I think it's the 10th or 11th of February. It was already our, f our first official test day. So uh, there's not a lot of, uh, obviously, turnaround. But thankfully, we're not having to build race cars over Christmas. So most of the team will have probably th at least three weeks off, hopefully four, and, uh, and of course, recharge the batteries and, uh, and get on with it. But uh, as Jamie says, there's three things we don't want to do over Christmas is pack a bag, get in the hotel room, or jump on a plane because we spend the whole year doing exactly that. So it's uh, something we just uh, spend some time at home for me and uh, and uh, hang out with the kids and uh, hopefully get Levi to ride a motorbike. We got him a little bit bigger one and uh, he's a bit scared of it, so we'll um, try and get him on that. But uh, other than that, it's um, uh, yeah, just basically chill out, uh, try not to have too much Christmas pudding because uh, the season will start again very soon. And one last question from me, Jamie. What's power to you? Oh, God. <laughs> hey, we've been working hard all week, and over the pressure on me now. I'm still on making the most of now, actually. You can also understand that. Come on, Andy Lounge. You want to see it? Actually, um, um, what Jamie forgot to say is the cup you see here is actually uh, poor old Steph, our PR girl, spent the whole time from Homebush here trying to clean it because we spent the whole night drinking out of it. So, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I know. It's, it actually holds a, uh, was it a can and a half, yeah, can and a half, and uh, and then, of course, everyone, uh, there's a lot of DNA is actually probably still inside it. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> it got quite messy, so uh, um, it was power to me. I actually, uh, I was probably, I actually thought I had a lot of power because the boys wanted me to drink out of it like everyone else, and I said, and we had Casey Stoner there, and uh, Casey, uh, didn't want to drink it unless I drank out of it, and of course I wasn't going to drink out unless Jamie drank out of it. So I thought I had a lot of power in me that Jamie wouldn't do it, but he did it. So, uh, so yeah, then I had to back it up. <laughs> Embarrassing, no. It took me about a minute. Old country boy here, down to about 10 seconds. He's got the throat up. Okay, um, anyone, uh, uh, anyone in the audience got some uh, questions for these guys? <laughs> Or suggestions on uh, what's power to them. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask, when you came around that turn and pulled umbrella and had had that accident, what was your first thought when you came around the turn? Well, it was interesting because uh, I spoke to the FPR guys. Oh, sorry. The question was, what did I, uh, what was going through my mind when I went around the, the turn, um, turn ten corner um, when pulled umbrella and I think it was Michael Caruso had both uh, become, try to uh, turn a uh, falcon into a Holden or a Holden into a falcon. Um, it, uh, it was one of those things, I was going down that little straight down near the uh, train station there and I actually looked up and I could see the back of Paul Dumbrell's car sort of turning himself around. I thought there was going to be some sort of carnage around the corner but I wasn't expecting both cars to actually uh, interlink. So uh, as I've gone around the corner, you sort of go around there with a little bit more reserve and uh, hopefully a little bit more um, uh, awareness. But uh, yeah, as I said, I didn't realise both the cars would be propped in the middle of the road, so I just had to think full hard right, and uh, thankfully I, I managed to miss those cars, but uh, it was, uh, yeah, just touch and go. It's, um, yeah, I was very, very thankful, but uh, going through my mind was just trying to stay out, out of, obviously, part of their accident, and obviously also staying off the wall, because uh, uh, at that stage we were running fourth, and to, if they hadn't had their accident, we probably would have finished fourth, because we'd run out of tyres, we'd burnt them up trying to get to where we were, and, uh, of course, with those two uh, guys having their own accident, it elevated us into second position, which was a fantastic result. So, um, yeah, very, very lucky. It's a street circuit, and it's very hard to see around corners because every corner is pretty much blind. But uh, luckily, I actually saw uh, PD, which, you know, we all, all say it was a shame because that was his last race ever in a V8 supercar. He was, uh, you know, basically uh, on for a second position for his last race, and uh, with all that happening, obviously, he had a DNF. Two seventy five. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, hey, that's 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 part of the job. At the end of the day, it's uh, we, we we keep talking on the the safety thing all the time, but um, ever hopefully everyone's going in the same direction. Um, 
and hopefully we're all professional enough to uh, to know what's going on. But as Lanzi said, everyone's out there just going hard and going as hard as they possibly can. And if something happens in front, so be it. But I was I had my skirt on all day yesterday. As soon as I'd see a, a locked wheel or two cars go into a blind corner. I was expecting the worst and, uh, and would get out of it, but the car's unbelievably safe. You can you can bash them up pretty hard to uh, you know and, and get away with it. So it's just full steam ahead. If, if you got nothing to lose the last race of the year, you just go hard. And if you uh, end up in the wall, you end up in the wall. <laughs> with, with the car of the future, um, are you guys likely to change the badge on the front? No, we're not. No. The question is, with Car of the Future, are we likely to change manufacturers? So what's what's happening for 2013? Uh, they've opened up the rules and they've introduced a new car. It's going to be it's a lot more standardised. It's going to be 100 kilos lighter. They're going to change the characteristics of it a bit. What they're trying to do is introduce more manufacturers. Um, when, when the whole model started 10 years ago, Ford and Holden had about 50% of the market. Now combined, I think it's... 25%, I think they both have combined. So we've got to, we've got to advance with the times. Um, so the new car of the future will op offer the opportunity for, for more manufacturers to come in. So 2013, there will be at least one more manufacturer. Uh, not sure exactly who. We're, we're hoping it's a Toyota or a Nissan of the world or a Mitsubishi, but um, the Hyundais and the Kias are showing a lot of interest at the moment. Uh, but Team Vodafone-wise, we're, we're pretty confident we'll stay with uh, the red line for, for many years to come. One more question. Do you guys have, you guys have personal track day cars? And what are they? <laughs> um, oh, track days. We only get, uh, we'll get, we race 15 uh, weekends a year. We only get six days to test the race car throughout uh, the, well, basically the 12 months. So uh, we don't normally, or don't, well, actually don't drive a car that often, but uh, um, the question is, do we have track day cars? We don't. We, well, we've, the team's got a ride ride car, which we use for rides and everything else, which we, uh, on uh, on any given day, if the you know PJ and the team organise rides, we, uh, we do them at Eastern Creek, we do them at Queensland Raceway. Uh, so we do them all over the place. But uh, as personal cars, no, I, actually, my, my road car is a Holden Colorado. So, uh, um, yeah, it's, not, it's, no, uh, it's a dirty diesel, so it's no uh, speed freak. Um, we actually... Uh, uh, interesting you ask about the cars. We do do uh, some track days on bikes. So uh, in the sense that we, uh, we do do some stuff on tracks, but uh, more on motorbikes than we do on cars. What's your, first, what's your road car? I actually don't own a car. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a roadie from Holden and then we, we rent a bit supercar each weekend. And we, um, it's great, you come in, you do your pit stop, they fill it up with fuel, new tyres, and you just got to get out of there before, uh, before you have to pay. <laughs> There's no number plates either, so they can't, they can't track you down. <laughs> Guys, once again, congratulations. Um, uh, thanks for being such fantastic uh, brand ambassadors uh, for us and doing us proud uh, all, all the way through the season. Um, the guys are going to be uh, uh, signing uh, stuff and available for photos over there for another uh, uh, 20 minutes. So please hang around and, uh, uh, and ask them, but give them a, 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 round, of, uh, a round of applause. <laughs>